In this part of the course, we look at the first aid actions for medical emergencies, including difficulty breathing, choking, heart attack, bleeding, and stroke. Your actions in the first few minutes when you see the signs of any of these conditions could help save a life. Breathing. It's usually smooth and easy. We run, play, go about our daily lives, and hardly even notice it. But if someone suddenly has trouble breathing, it's an emergency. Let's go, move up, move up! Antonio, pass! <laughs> Shoot! Nice! Pass for light gas! Josh? Josh, are you okay? Is it your asthma? Okay, where's your bag? Okay, hang on. You can tell if someone is having trouble breathing if the person is breathing very fast or very slowly, is having trouble with every breath, has noisy breathing, you hear a sound or whistle as the air enters or leaves the lungs, or can only make sounds or speak no more than a few words at a time in between breaths, although the person is trying to say more. Is this the right medicine? There you go. Someone with a medical condition, such as asthma, usually knows about his own medical condition. He often carries inhaler medicine, which can help him breathe easier within minutes of using it. At times, the person can have such a hard time breathing that he needs okay, help well. using his inhaler. For this reason, you should be ready to assemble the inhaler and help him use it. To assemble an inhaler, first shake the medicine. Put the medicine canister into the mouthpiece, remove the cap from the mouthpiece, attach a spacer if there's one available and if you know how. To help someone use an inhaler, have him first tilt his head back slightly and breathe out slowly. Have him place the inhaler or spacer in his mouth and push down on the medicine canister and then breathe in very deeply and slowly. Then have the person hold his breath for about 10 seconds and then breathe out slowly. Also, it's important to know that there are different kinds of inhaler devices. To summarize, follow these steps for someone who is having breathing problems. First, make sure the scene is safe. Ask the person if he needs help. If he does, Ask if he has medicine. If he has medicine, get it for him and then assemble and use the inhaler. Phone 911 if the person has no medicine, the person does not get better after using his medicine, the person's breathing gets worse, the person has trouble speaking, or the person becomes unresponsive. Provide CPR if the person becomes unresponsive and stops breathing or is only gasping. Stay with the person until someone with more advanced training takes over. Allergies are quite common, but if severe, an allergic reaction can quickly turn into a medical emergency. Symptoms of mild allergic reactions are stuffy nose, sneezing, itching around the eyes, itchy skin, or a rash. However, some reactions that seem mild can become severe within minutes. A number of things can cause a severe allergic reaction, including eggs, peanuts, chocolate, some medications, and insect bites and stings, especially bee stings. The signs of a severe allergic reaction are trouble breathing, swelling of the tongue and face, or signs of shock. An epinephrine auto-injector is a prescribed device that has medicine in it. The auto-injector will help a person with a severe allergic reaction breathe more easily. If a person has an epinephrine auto-injector, he will generally know how and when to use it. You may help give the person the injection if you have been trained and your state allows it. In a moment, you're going to practice using a spring-activated epinephrine pin. But first, we'll show you a demonstration of what you need to do during the practice. Pay close attention because you'll be demonstrating the same steps to your instructor afterward. First, make sure the scene is safe. 
Phone or send someone to phone 911 and get the first aid kit and the AED. To use the epinephrine pen, follow the instructions on the pen and make sure you are holding the pen correctly. Hold the pen in your fist without touching either end because the needle comes out of one end and press the tip of the injector hard against the side of the person's thigh, about halfway between the hip and the knee. Give the injection through clothes or on bare skin. Hold the pen in place for about 10 seconds. Pull the pen straight out, making sure you don't put your fingers over the end that has been pressed against the person's thigh. Either the person getting the injection or the person giving the injection should rub the injection spot for about 10 seconds. Note the time of the injection and give the pen to paramedics for proper disposal. If the person doesn't get better or if there is a delay greater than 10 minutes for advanced help to arrive, consider giving a second dose, if available. Okay, now it's your turn to practice using an epinephrine pen. While the video is paused, you'll pair up with a partner and take turns practicing, and then your instructor will test you afterward. So if we could just maintain the momentum we've had so far, Looks like we need to keep up our profits for over the summer. But why don't we add a new product line now when it's slow, and then we could increase production in the fall? No, not such a good idea. Uh, if I could just try uh, tell you. George, what's going on? You keep rubbing your chest. Oh, I don't feel so good. Oh, it's no, it's no problem. Listen, George, I'm trained in first aid. Can I help? Many people with an uncomfortable feeling in the chest don't want to believe that it could be a heart attack. If someone has signs of a possible heart attack, you must act and phone 911 right away, even if the person doesn't want you to. The first minutes of a heart attack are the most important. That's when a person is likely to get worse or even die. Also, many of the treatments for heart attack will be most successful if they are given quickly. Yeah, I, I guess so. Okay, tell me what's wrong. It's just my, my chest feels tight. It feels like something is squeezing it. Oh, I'm starting to feel sick to my stomach. If I can just sit down for a minute, I'll be fine. Alicia, phone 911. Mm. Tell them we have someone with tightness in their chest. Got it. And Joe, could you get the first aid kit and the AED? They're in the break room. Yes, uh, there's a man here, he's having tightness in the chest. Uh, he's sweating a lot and he's nauseated. No, no, wait, wait a minute. It's just some, some leftover heartburn. I just don't want to make a big deal. Listen, George, do you have any allergies to aspirin? No. Have you had any bleeding lately? Have you ever had a stroke? No, neither. Yes, it's 8200 Bell Street. George, I'm gonna give you one Adult dose aspirin. Chew that up and swallow it. Okay. We've just given him one adult dose aspirin. Okay. Thanks. Paramedics are on the way. One of the main signs of a heart attack is chest discomfort. Most heart attacks involve discomfort in the center of the chest that lasts more than a few minutes or that goes away and comes back. It can feel like uncomfortable pressure, squeezing, fullness, or pain. Discomfort may also appear in other areas of the upper body. Symptoms can include pain or discomfort in one or both arms, the back, neck, jaw, or stomach. Other signs of a heart attack include shortness of breath with or without chest discomfort, breaking out in a cold sweat, nausea, or lightheadedness. But what about the difference between a heart attack and cardiac arrest. We often hear these two terms used as if they are the same, but they are not. Sudden cardiac arrest results from an abnormal heart rhythm. This abnormal rhythm causes the heart to quiver so it can no longer pump blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. Within seconds, the person becomes unresponsive and is not breathing normally or is only gasping. Death occurs within minutes if the person does not receive immediate life-saving treatment. 
A heart attack occurs when blood flow to part of the heart muscle is blocked. This blockage is caused when a clot forms in a blood vessel that carries blood to the heart. If the blocked vessel is not reopened quickly, the muscle normally nourished by that vessel begins to die. A heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest. If someone has signs of a possible heart attack, do the following. Make sure the person stays calm and rests. Phone 911, ask someone to get the first aid kit and an AED. If the person has no allergy to aspirin, no serious bleeding, and no signs of a stroke, have the person chew and swallow one adult or two low-dose aspirins. If the person becomes unresponsive, be prepared to provide CPR. Remember that during a heart attack, giving aspirin appropriately can make a big difference in the person's quality of recovery. Fainting may occur when someone stands without moving for a long time, especially if it's hot, has a heart condition, suddenly stands after squatting or bending down, or receives bad news. Fainting is a short period of time when a person briefly stops responding, usually less than a minute, and then seems fine. A person who faints usually gets dizzy and then becomes unresponsive. If you're asked to give first aid for a person who is dizzy but still responds, make sure the scene is safe, help the person lie flat on the floor, and phone 911 if the person doesn't improve or becomes unresponsive. If a person faints and then starts to respond, Ask the person to continue to lie flat on the floor until he can sit up and feels normal. If the person fell, look for injuries caused by the fall. Phone 911. This, these, this don't make sense. What is going on here? Sarah, is it your grades? Are you trying to get those done? Remind me when these are due. What time is it? Is something wrong? You don't seem like yourself. Diabetes is a disease that affects the levels of sugar in the blood. Too much or too little sugar causes problems. Some people with diabetes take medication, such as insulin, to maintain their sugar levels. But if a person with diabetes experiences low blood sugar, her behavior can change. I haven't had a chance to eat lunch, but I've got to get these grades done. Sarah, you need to eat. You have diabetes, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Low blood sugar can occur if a person with diabetes has not eaten or is vomiting, has not eaten enough food for her level of activity, or has injected too much insulin. If low blood sugar occurs in a person with diabetes, the person may become irritable or confused, hungry, thirsty, or weak, sleepy or sweaty or the person might even have a seizure. Trudy, can you get Sarah some orange juice? She needs something with sugar in it. Sarah, would you feel better lying down? No, no, I'll be okay. Can you eat something and swallow? Trudy's bringing you some juice. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Signs of low blood sugar can come on quickly in someone with diabetes. Take the following first aid actions. If the person can sit up and swallow, ask her to eat or drink something with sugar that can rapidly restore blood glucose levels. These items include glucose tablets, orange juice, or soft chewy candy such as jelly beans. If the person can't sit up or swallow, don't force her. Have the person sit quietly or lie down. If the person does not improve within 15 minutes, phone or have someone phone 911. Stroke is another medical emergency for which you may need to use your first aid skills. Strokes occur when blood stops flowing to a part of the brain. This can happen if a blood vessel in the brain is blocked or leaks. Many people can be given treatments in the first hours after a stroke that can reduce the damage and improve recovery. Therefore, it's important to recognize the signs of stroke quickly and get medical care fast. You can use the FAST method to recognize the warning signs of stroke. It's a simple way to remember the warning signs of stroke, which are face drooping, 
Does one side of the face droop or is it numb? Arm weakness. Is one arm weak or numb? Speech difficulty. Is speech slurred? And time to phone 911 if someone shows any of these symptoms. If you see these signs and think someone is having a stroke, take these actions. First, make sure the scene is safe. Phone or have someone phone 911 and get the first aid kit and AED. Note the time when the stroke signs first appeared. Remain with the person until someone with more advanced training arrives and takes over. If the person becomes unresponsive and is not breathing normally or only gasping, provide CPR. All right, right, left, and go. Again. Again, right, left. Right, left, a little faster. Right, left, again, right, left. Darla? Dottie, there's something wrong. Darla, are you okay? She's having a seizure. I need everyone to stay back and please move these things away from her so she doesn't get hurt. Beth, I need you to phone 911, put it on speaker mode and leave the phone here next to me. I need you to go to my office, get the first aid kit. It's right on the wall right next to my desk. Okay. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, we have a woman down on the floor. We think she's having a seizure. What's your address? We are at the Karate Studio off 5th and Lamar. It's 5110 Lamar. The Karate Studio at 5th and Lamar. 5110 Lamar. We're sending paramedics, so please stay on the line. Okay, thank you. Should we put something in her mouth for her to bite down on? No, you do not want to put anything in a person's mouth when they're having a seizure. Darla, are you okay? Are you okay? Her seizure has stopped. She's moving and breathing, but she's still not responding. Darla, it's Dottie. I'm here to help you. A seizure is abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Most seizures stop within a few minutes and are often caused by a medical condition called epilepsy. But they can also be caused by head injury, low blood sugar, heat-related injury, poisoning, or sudden cardiac arrest. During a seizure, a person may lose muscle control, fall to the ground, or stop responding and the person usually has jerking movement of the arms, legs, and sometimes other parts of the body. However, not all seizures look like this. Some people might not respond and have a glassy-eyed stare. During the seizure, a person may bite her tongue, cheek, or mouth. You can give first aid for that injury after the seizure is over. And after a seizure, it isn't unusual for the person to be slow to respond, be confused, or even fall asleep. The most important first aid action for a person having a seizure is to protect the person from injury. Move furniture or other objects out of the way and place a small pad or towel under the person's head. Then phone 911 and get the first aid kit. After a seizure, quickly check to see if the person is responsive and breathing. If she is unresponsive and is not breathing normally or only gasping, provide CPR. Stay with the person until advanced help arrives. If the person is having trouble breathing because of vomiting or fluids in her mouth, roll the person onto her side. There are also some myths about what you should do to help someone who is having a seizure. Some of these can actually harm a person instead of helping. This video and your student workbook provide the correct information about caring for someone having a seizure. Darla, it's Dottie. I'm here to help you. What happened? You had a seizure. We were in the middle of a lesson. We phoned 911 and the paramedics are on their way. Oh, my mouth hurts. I think I bit my lip. Here, let me get you something for that. Put this in between your lip and your gum and press down. That should stop the bleeding. When a person has a mouth injury, it can be serious if blood or broken teeth block the airway and cause breathing problems. But bleeding from the mouth can usually be stopped with pressure. When giving first aid, make sure the scene is safe. 
get the first aid kit and wear personal protective equipment. If bleeding is coming from the tongue, lip, or cheek and you can reach it easily, apply pressure with gauze or a clean cloth. If you haven't phoned 911, and if you can't stop the bleeding or if the person has trouble breathing, phone or ask someone else to phone 911. By now, you've learned how to describe the assessment and first aid actions for the following medical emergencies. Breathing problems such as asthma, severe choking in an adult, child, or infant, severe allergic reaction, heart attack, fainting, diabetes, stroke, and seizure. You've also learned and demonstrated an important skill, how to use an epinephrine pen. Next, we will take a look at injury emergencies. But first, the video will pause so that your instructor can ask you some review questions to answer as a group.